Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 22nd of um, January, 2014, and we are blessed with Oakland tonight. Um, <laughs> we have a group of teachers and educators, um, along with Paul O from the National Writing Project, uh, and they will go ahead and introduce themselves here in just one second. Um, but um, the, they are part of educating for democracy in, digi in the digital age, EDDA. Um, we uh, have talked about them before on the show and uh, talked about the issues. We, we hope to talk about the question tonight about civic engagement, uh, what, what some of the exciting things are, what some of the hurdles are, just really anything that comes up here tonight. Um, and so, Paul and uh, Young Wan, I'm going to throw it to you guys to do introductions here. And then we'll see where it goes. Welcome, and everybody. I'll, yeah, and there are a few others joining us as we go. Thanks, Paul. I'll, I'll defer to Young Wan for the introductions, and then I'll just okay. jump in and talk a little bit about the NWP piece. Super. Okay, great. So, um, well, I'll start just by introducing myself. My name is Young Wan Choi, and I am the Civic Engagement Coordinator for uh, the Oakland Unified School District. And um, one, one thing that I'll just say by way of introduction, and not just of myself, but of, of the work that um, the fabulous teachers who are joining us here are doing in Oakland is um, that I think we're, we're really embarking on a, on a piece of our uh, school's educational mission that um, has always been an important piece, but is often not recognized, and that is uh, what we in Oakland call um, preparing students to be community ready. Um, and in the national dialogue, we often hear lots of talk about college and career ready. And while these are all very worthy goals, um, the the idea that we also um, need to prepare our young people to be effective participants uh, in their larger community, uh, both um, in their neighborhoods as well as in their political structures, I think is um, one that is an important um, perspective that we want to get out to um, the larger audience of not just teachers but of, of um, people in general. Um, so I'm just going to pass it off to um, each of our teachers. Um, if you would just say your name and where you teach, um, and if you want to say just a little bit about um, uh, what you're doing around civic engagement, a very brief uh, intro, that would be great, and then we'll, we'll dive more into it um, as, we, as we go. And we're having Stephen and and uh, other folks pop in, which is great. Um, Jesse so, did too, yeah. Yep, and Jesse. So Jesse and Stephen, we're just doing introductions, so welcome. Uh, I just went, and I'm, I'm going to pass it off to, um, how about you, Jessica? Uh, sure. Um, my name's Jessica Tyson, and I teach ninth grade at Oakland Tech High School. Um, I teach both history and English, and I focus on California studies. So there's plenty of room to talk about civic engagement in all sorts of weird ways that are peculiar to California. Um, in particular, Jeff? I've been working at Oakland Tech. Sorry, is this not working? No, yeah, it's, no, it's working fine. I was just going to ask you, um, do you teach the same students in those history and English classes or different students? I teach mostly the same students. I teach five sections, um, and two of those, so four of those sections are with the same two groups of students, then I have a hanging fifth history class. Got it. So yes, it's a very closely tied curriculum, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do we're, did, were you going to say more? Or, sorry. I'll, I'll pass it off for now. Okay. I've got plenty to say, but I can wait. <laughs> All right, I was having a hard time unmuting there. Um, why don't we just uh, keep it going down the road there with Maggie and then Marianne, and then uh, we'll jump back to Jesse. Sounds good. Hi, uh, I'm Maggie Sheffer. I teach English 11, AP English Language, and I'm the journalism advisor at Castlemont High School. And most of the work I did last year with uh, EDA and civic engagement had to do with journalism, but not so much this year. So I can talk about both journalism and then trying to integrate civic engagement into a regular English class. Great. Thank you. And Marianne? Yes, um, I'm Marianne Wolf, and I teach uh, political theory and American government uh, AP at Oakland Technical High School. 
Um, the students, I, I have the students actually for two hours, uh, just like Jessica, um, which makes for you know very interesting um, format. Um, last year in our civic engagement, uh, we had students uh, involved in uh, a local initiative and also uh, in a uh, in the presidential campaign 2012. Um, and that, that was uh, a really, really important um, uh, experience for me because of, of the excitement all, that all the students seem to have about uh, engaging in this way. Great. Thank you. And Jesse Shapiro. Hi, my name is uh, Jesse Shapiro. I'm a uh, U.S. history teacher and a government economics teacher at Oakland High School. Um, I think I'm you know, I find ways to kind of integrate civic engagement both into my history class um, and I'm doing government and economics for the first time in five years so I'm looking for ways to kind of, uh, you know, make what I do in that class more authentic by having civic engagement components. Uh, one of the projects I've done this year that kind of integrated a, um, civic engagement to my U.S. history class was when we were studying the Progressive Era, we looked at some of the problems that existed during the Progressive Era such as uh, food justice issues, exploitation of workers and uh, students actually reached out and worked with uh, organizations that are combating those issues today. They made a uh, flyer that shows how these issues were issues historically and also issues today and they actually had to go to a public venue and uh, present their brochures to people in the public. So uh, that was one example of civic engagement that I've utilized in my class. Great. <laughs> Thank you guys. Um, and uh, I guess I'll just pass it back to Paul and then um, Stephen. Um, and Chris, if you guys want to introduce yourselves as well, and then and let's just dive into the conversation. Great. So, hi everyone. I'm Paul O. I work with the National Rhyme Project. I'm based in Berkeley, and uh, the National Rhyme Project is one of the partners uh, in the civic engagement uh, in the grant, actually, that um, sits behind Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age. The other partners are OUSD, obviously, and um, the Civic Engagement uh, Research Group out of Mills College, uh, and you know, you might be asking why is why would the writing project be um, involved in something like this? Um, in some ways, uh, you know, and some of the teachers involved in our project are, are writing project teachers, but many are not. Um, I would say though that uh, the the aspects to this that that make sense from our perspective are that um, as some of you um, and I think many in the audience know, we're very much engaged in um, thinking about connected learning principles. Um, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll put a link in the chat to that. <clears throat> and uh, one of the underlying um, core pr principles of connected learning is this notion of of a uh, youth um, in school and out having the ability to engage um, in the political process um, and being able to uh, have a voice um, in uh, the systems in which they operate. Uh, so, so that's one reason, in, in a sort of very broad way, why we would be interested. Um, but uh, just drilling down, uh, you know, my work, as Paul Alson knows, as Chris knows, uh, is very much engaged in, um, or very much about digital literacies, and um, and so though on the surface, you know, the ability to uh, say um, critically analyze, you know, the results of a search may not seem, uh, or may seem somewhat removed from uh, what you might think of as, uh, uh, you know, engaging civically. Um, in today's world, the ability to uh, to do that, you know, to have those skills, uh, really means uh, the difference between, in some senses, being able to be an informed civic actor or not. Um, and so, so we also are very much in interested in being able to give, you know, all youth in Oakland this opportunity to um, have a chance to uh, have the skills actually to engage in that way in um, this digital environment uh, that. Uh, is having such an impact on our political life. Um, the last thing I would just say really quickly is um, we presented, a number of us, a session at the Digital Media and Learning Conference last year. Paul was a part of that, actually. Uh, and one thing that really struck me is something that Ellen Mida, who's one of our colleagues in this project, talked about. And that is that, uh, you know, why focus on schools? Um, because you know, we see so much uh, civic work that happens outside of schools, the kind of organizing that happens outside of schools. Um, and I think, actually, it's easy to dismiss schools in a way. Um, but the reality is that schools provide the only legally mandated opportunity, you know, for youth to, um, to really uh, 
be exposed to the kinds of civic engagement um, related to civic, uh, I'm sorry, civic education opportunities related to civic engagement. Um, so, so I think we uh, in this project feel like this is an obligation on our part as educators in the school system to provide these opportunities to youth. Um, so I think that's the, the gist of it, and uh, it's great to be here. Stephen, you want to jump in here, and then Chris? OK, we're just introducing ourselves, right? No yeah, just introductions. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm Stephen Roto. I'm the high school history specialist for OUSD. Um, and then I'm also one of the inquiry group leaders um, with the senior capstone group, which Marianne is a part of at Oakland Tech. Um, and previously, I taught with Jesse at Oakland High. And I'll finish in uh, introductions. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, I'm here because you know I have some students who are pretty politically uh, active. Uh, they were a lot of them volunteered in Utah for the Obama campaign. One was the volunteer coordinator, um, and then um, so you know like uh, a lot of what I do is is right uh, up your area of interest. And um, the other thing is I paid attention to uh, your work from afar. You know that um, I didn't really know of. I think this is through Mills College. I could be wrong, um, but the Civic Engagement Research Group. Um, you know, I've just kind of followed what you're doing there as kind of a lead in my own community. So uh, yeah, I'm just interested in hearing how things work for you. So, can I jump in with a question? Is that okay? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. So, so I I I am curious right away to hear from the teachers to hear. Like, what was your question when you entered this project? From your own teaching experience, you know, what, what were you, what was, uh, you know, fascinating you about this topic? And where is that question now? I can speak to that a little bit. Um, Thanks, Maggie. Yeah. So, we most of us are in our second year as part of the EDA project, and last year was didn't have the specific focus on inquiry. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but was more about figuring out what it meant to have civic engagement embedded in history and English classes and government classes. Um, so last year, I think my big question was, what does this look like in an English three class? How can I bring civic engagement? What does that even look like? And for me, that ended up being through journalism. And I was lucky to already have some connections to local journalism teachers, so I worked on bringing journalism into my English 3 class as a unit and helping students publish their work and finding a venue for that. This year, uh, my research is much more specifically skill-based about helping students to research. So the inquiry focus of this year is more on helping students have skills for analyzing media, looking for bias in the media, so having gone through this wider process last year, this year for me at least is much more skill-based and the inquiry process is helping me hone in on what the skills students need to have that wider sense of civic engagement. Any others? We encourage leaping in. <laughs> well, uh, I think for, for me... Thanks, yeah, I think for me it was um, how do I, I mean normally when there's a presidential election I do get my students to get civically engaged in campaigns, etc. And so the thought I had was how, I'm going to do, how am I going to do this from year to year in between presidential or gubernatorial elections. And so that's what we're working on this year and lo and behold the students were really quite um, uh, articulate in figuring out uh, what those engagements would, would be this year. So we're working, the students decided they wanted to work on uh, issue three different issues. One is school security, uh, the other one is uh, sexism on campus, and the third one is um, <coughs> vocational education uh, at our school. So they were pretty good about figuring out, uh, you know, what topics and engaging in some work uh, that Steve saw them doing the other day in terms of trying to figure out where they're going to get their evidence uh, before they have to present to various uh, school authorities or the PTA or uh, even the school district. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased by um, the progress we're making with this this year. 
Um, I can jump in too. Um, I think that uh, you know, for me as a teacher, it's like what I'm trying to impart on my students probably more than anything else is I want them to become better writers and I want them to become better speakers. And I just feel like uh, doing civic engagement gives students kind of a um, it gives them an authentic assessment of that. And I, I've found that students really step their game up, that they uh, that their writing is much better when they know that other people's eyes other than me is going to be on it. They become better speakers when they know that they're going to have to go out in public and be prepared to speak and that they're going to be held accountable for what they say. So I see uh, civic engagement as a way of really developing some of these academic skills that we valued as teachers for a very long time and that we know that they're going to need um, in the real world. Um, we have to put them out in the real world in order for them to use the skills that they're going to use in the real world. I can say something briefly. Um, I am just teaching California Studies for the second year now. I taught American history for many years before that. And when I first uh, found out about the possibility of teaching California history, I got really excited and thought, well, how cool is it to learn about California history here in California? As someone who hasn't lived in California my whole life, this was actually uh, interesting to me. But I realized very quickly that obviously that's not inherently engaging to students. Um, go figure. So I saw civic engagement initially as a way to uh, explicitly engage students with California and the very specific political and social culture that we have here. Um, what that means in my curriculum is not quite satisfying to me yet because I find that my civic engagement projects are actually still pretty general. Um, and that could be a function of teaching ninth graders too. By the time they get to Marianne, they have um, much more background and much more expertise to take to a PTA meeting or a district meeting. Um, so that's where I am. Maggie, I'm wondering if you want to jump in on Jesse's point, um, just in terms of thinking about civic engagement and um, what it does for, or authentic audience particularly, and what it does for students' writing. I know that you've done a lot of work in that area, and i um, wondering if you want to jump in there. I was actually just about to say that. I didn't <laughs> um, yeah, I think Jesse's point is one of the most important things. I've seen students at Casamont who struggle a lot with literacy and with reading and writing really come alive when they know that their writing is being read actually by yourself, young one, and by other people at the district or community members or their parents. Um, having work published online or in print really energizes them, and it's a totally genuine experience for them. Uh, especially because our school, Castlemont High School, gets a lot of negative press in the media and students are quite aware of that. The ability to choose their own topic to either advocate for change or fight against that image of Castlemont, so to have kind of both options, um, has really been energizing to students and then to have that responded to and even to have teachers bring students' articles into class as a text that is then read and discussed has been extremely powerful for students and I've seen them come alive and be more open to the editing process, which is often where I tend to tend to lose students as an English teacher. They're usually really excited through the drafting and then going through the editing and the grammar is often where it seems to get boring, but knowing that you have a genuine audience and you want your piece to be powerful and perfect and persuasive has been, has been great to watch and has changed the way that I think as I plan project-based units. Even when I'm not publishing the work, it's helped me think through what I want a finished product to look like. Hey, Joe. Hiya. Do you want to uh, introduce yourself and say Ooh. a little bit about what you're, where you, where you teach, and uh, what you've been doing around civic engagement? Sure. Um, Joe Pariso. I teach senior English over at Fremont High. Um, around civic engagement, uh, basically, my students have been involved in blogging as their main form of civic engagement, uh, mostly around their senior research projects. And that's where we're at. And now we're moving more into film production and a lot more publishing on our Youth Voices blog. Uh, not just the blogging part, but using it as a forum to publish their work, creative pieces, to get feedback. So, yeah. And partnering with other classrooms. Hi, Chris. Um, uh, and their students and doing more online academic discussions for via Google Hangout and trying to use that regularly. Do you want to say what you and Chris did around the Google Hangout since since you mentioned it? <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, so our classrooms kind of just they hung out and it was cool. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And the images 
of our, what our classrooms look like side by side together uh, was was very powerful for for my kids especially. And we did it a couple of times that week, and we talked mostly about their uh, where my kids are at in the research process and having drafted, and where Chris's kids are at uh, in terms of formulating their ideas for their for their projects, and where we. It was cool to see some of the kids connecting. Um, similar topics, say violence, but just totally different perspectives and what their take was on it and where they could go with it. Um, so now looking at where where's the potential for the kids to form those partnerships um, on their own or how we can encourage that on a smaller scale, I guess. That's, where my, that's what my kids would love to do uh, now that they've done it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hi, Paul. So uh, l let me ask a, um, a pushback question then. I, it sounds like could civic engagement be anything that's really cool? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it sounds like, um, so how do, you, how do you define the edges of it, if I, if I could ask it that way? Because it as you've been describing, it sounds like really interesting, wonderful things you're doing, but you know, how do you define the hard art? That's a great. I think that's a great question to ask, Paul, and one that we're all figuring out. So I'd love to. I'd love to hear uh, how our teachers respond to that. So it's. I feel like this is sort of the question we've been grappling with a lot around, yeah. like what is civic action and what, like, what mm -hmm. constitutes civic engagement. Um, so look to hear uh, how people are thinking about that. I definitely think I struggle with that question and over the time I've been a member of EDA my understanding of what civic engagement is has definitely broadened. At first I felt really threatened by this project thinking that I had to bring my students out to rallies every week or they had to be doing petitions or going out in the neighborhood and all those things are definitely wonderful but realizing that for me it could be publishing, it could be um, letter writing, it could be thinking about all the different things that could be helped me out and I still have those goals to shoot for but the ability to connect it to smaller increments of student writing made it much more manageable in the classroom and much more real for my students. So I really think I still struggle with it but a really meaningful part of EDA has been that I don't have to do the most amazing project that the world has ever seen but that I can do small incremental amounts of civic engagement in my classroom to keep students more engaged and also have their learning impact the world. I think the impact part is what matters to me. Um, oh. Students have to be, I mean, for my sort of on the fly definition of civic engagement here, I would say that students have to be doing something that is designed to have an impact on their community in some way. So. Obviously, that could mean something very concrete about audience. Um, it sounds like Maggie, you're doing a lot of great work around that. Um, but it could be something more rooted in historical analysis where students are doing research to inform themselves about ways to take action. That's my two cents there. Well, I think, I think the heart of it for me is that I have a real concern about the sort of disengagement of young people in uh, American democracy um, and I think that if we can engage young people while they're still in high school I think that that interest um, and maybe the motivation uh, may be sustained over time I think there have been some studies about that and um, I am concerned about uh, the percentage of people generally uh, participating in elections in this country I know that there's been a little bit of a bump just because of the um, the, the error of the of the 2000 election and then the historic uh, um, presidency of, of Barack Obama. Uh, but I'm wondering if that's going to be sustained uh, afterward. Uh, maybe it will be in 2016 uh, if we have a woman uh, candidate. But I'm concerned for the long range, and I think in the long range, it's really important to get students uh, involved. Um, as early as possible and that's why I'm glad that this is starting at our school in the ninth grade um, because if we give them four doses uh, hopefully that will sustain their their interest um, as they become adults and it might be helpful in terms of um, ensuring the 
the prolongation of the American Republic. I think it was Jefferson who, or who said, it was actually Ben Franklin, who said to uh, a woman after the Constitutional Convention, he said, <clears throat> she asked him, what kind of government did you create? And he said, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. And I, I go year to year still worrying about whether we can keep it. And I think that this is a great project uh, to maybe help, uh, help us sustain our uh, own uh, form of government, even though, of course, it isn't perfect right now and probably never will be. But uh, hopefully this will help us to sustain it with our own students. Hey, you know, can I just jump in and, and uh, put a little bit of a digital spin on, on this question that you asked, Paul, and um, I think pick up on, on something that um, Jessica was touching upon, this notion of research. Uh, you know, so a question that I might ask um, the group is, so if, if someone, um, if your students uh, see a Facebook page uh, that promotes a particular cause and they like it, is that taking action or not? And um, I mean, you know, I, I think the, the thing to me that is so interesting about this work is that it's the, the civic engagement piece to this is not necessarily simply about taking action, but it's also, and I think perhaps it's also building out what Marianne was talking about, um, uh, elements of, of informed action. You know, this notion that there is a civic education component to this and not simply an action component. So um, I think you were talking about, like, is civic engagement cool? I mean, I think that there are many things that could be thought of as cool that uh, one might do that, you know, falls within the realm of civic engagement, um, perhaps, or civic, or some sort of, or taking action, I guess. But to me, the question, and I think the question that we're all grappling with is, you know, what does it mean to take informed action? And, you know, how do we help kids get to that place where they're able to take informed action? Um, can I speak to that one? I, I, I wanted to say that I think that if part of the where I've seen some of the shift in the work in our class and in our school is, you know, they do so much uh, like research where they want to take have an impact on their community, and there's that part. But I think what what I what Paul what you're speaking to in terms of the digital part also is how do we start to use their their online platforms so that they expand the communities uh, which they think of uh, which they think they're a part and then take those expanded communities and and bring them into impact the actual local community because I feel like our kids are very much immersed in what's going on in the immediate um, and they want to help they want to um, they want to fix that but part of it too is they don't have enough they don't do enough they don't get out enough um, so I feel like some of the work digitally is how do we start to show use these platforms to make these connections um, in spaces where they might not normally like have that you know with other schools with other uh, I don't know with other programs so that to me is a civic an act of civic engagement in terms of like broadening your sense of who your community is and figuring that out so um, I just want to interject something because I think it's um, pretty relevant to this conversation. But um, Jessica, Marianne, and six other teachers at Tech have been working on a site plan for civic engagement. So they're trying to build a sequence of civic engagement experiences grades 9 through 12 um, at Oakland Tech. And um, one of the things that they've been looking at, which I think has really been powerful, has been um, trying to look at what are some criteria by which one can assess civic action? And, and it gets to this question of impact, like looking at impact. And um, one of those criteria is looking at the impact on the individual, him or herself, who's participating in that civic engagement. Um, and I think about my own uh, experience in high school. I wrote um, my own version of a modest proposal trying to get um, off-campus lunch privileges for uh, the seniors at the school and um, you know I didn't I thought of it as a sort of a, a way to galvanize um, and and be sort of a gadfly um, but I didn't realize that like the next day after the the article got published in the school newspaper that I got called to the principal's office <laughs> and all of a sudden I was having you know a conversation with 
you know, the power holder at the school, and um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a nice conversation, <laughs> but it was like it certainly got his attention, and it got me engaged in in my own local issue in a way that like all of a sudden, you know, just from you know the just the act of writing had led suddenly led to this very um, direct um, and powerful thing that was happening, and so I think for me, I, I sort of um, I just had that thought as people were talking about like, what is the connection here between writing and civic engagement and writing for an authentic audience and and also learning to to write about something that I really cared about and I wanted to to see change and then um, uh, I think that really showed me the power of the written word. Um, I wanted to follow up with that, Young, because I've been um, thinking about this for a while. Um, you know, so part of civic engagement is challenging the status quo. And so, like your story illustrates that, um, you know, in schools we talk a lot about we want kids to be critical thinkers. But sometimes I think there's a little ellipsis there, and that is until they start thinking critically about schools uh, or, you know, until they start thinking critically about their communities. So do you, do you run into any interference with your work or, or maybe in a larger sense, like what's the, what are the real challenges for maybe people who want to do this kind of work in their schools? Hmm. How about you guys uh, on the ground in the, in the classrooms and at your school sites? Any um, resistance, parents, admin, other teachers, students? I would say admin has been a challenge sometimes, especially because student journalists for the Castle Crier, our school newspaper, often are asking really hard questions. Um, I've had the honor of working with some students for three years in a row now on journalism and watch them move up from not knowing what their topics wanted to be and really struggling to find topics to now when they have any complaint about something going on at school, their first reaction is, oh, let's do a story about that in the crier. Let's go interview the administrators. Let's go do this. So that's been really empowering for students, but it, I would say it has been a challenge to read up on student press law, to become really informed myself as an advisor, to know the rights students have in a classroom, in a student forum, to really learn up on that. And that's been, it's been a challenge, I would say, but a really worthwhile one. I have a lot more rights than I realized initially. Well, I'm. Uh, I didn't. The students didn't really have a challenge when we were dealing with the presidential campaign. They seemed to be well received in the neighborhood, and there was no administrative issue around it. But now that we're looking at problems within the school, uh, we haven't yet engaged with the administration. That's sort of the next step, um, and I'm a little worried about it because we have a pretty new administration uh, currently, and uh, they they may not uh, you know, want to see the boat rock much uh, this year, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, uh, I think that my students are, are pretty determined, and I think they can take the challenge, and I'll be right behind them. Uh, um, ju uh, yeah, jump in, Jesse. Oh, Jesse, we can't hear you yet. You're not muted though, so I don't know. Mm. Check your sound. Nope. Oh wait, you are muted. Yes. No, nope, now he's not. Now you're not. Not check your sound uh, somewhere, Jesse. We don't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, somebody want to jump in for Jesse? Yeah, I was just going to say there are kinds of challenges, not just in terms of, like, political backlash, but, you know, I think Oakland is sort of, in some ways, you know, I think we, we're lucky in that uh, we have a, a culture in our city um, of activism and political engagement as sort of being, um, you know, I think a, a part of the culture of the, of the town. So um, in that way, you know, I think that we have some more opportunities than I can imagine in other kinds of places. Uh, but I'm, I'm imagining that even just on the level of like thinking about how we build civic engagement into the curriculum, there might be challenges in that way or other types of things that, that you all can jump in on in, as far as the challenges around this work. Um, I'm not in the classroom, obviously, but 
I mean, I guess some of the things that I noticed, I mean... Just just to remind people, this is Stephen Morell. Oh, yeah, sorry. Good. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but I, I'm you know, sorry, these, Marino. Marino got thrown. Go ahead. A, a lot of these projects that folks are talking about, you know, they're they're awesome. And But when you look at it, it takes a lot of time and energy on the part of those teachers to go kind of above and beyond. And so I guess my question would be, like, how do we take that district-wide? How do we make it so that people... Like, when you look at Joe's, the things that Joe is doing, it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, if, you know, if how do you get enough to do that, you know, on a smaller level and not be in, intimidated um, by all the, the extra responsibilities and, and the skills that are necessary in order to, to get that done? Um, and I also think in terms of the digital part, like, people might be like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not an expert at computers, so, you know, I, I can't do this. Um, so just getting them to feel comfortable and getting them to realize that, look, you don't have to, your project doesn't have to take on the world and your students don't have to, you know, do this really huge thing in order to be civically engaged. Like, you can do it in small doses and, you know, they can learn it, or you can learn as they learn as well. That's something that I've really enjoyed about working at Tech, articulating sort of a site plan for the year-by-year -year, um, civic engagement piece. Uh, what I've liked is seeing teachers at each grade level planning for this, and people are doing great things, and the projects are often sort of the kind that make you say, wow, they're really going above and beyond. But on the other hand, people are also just weaving this into their curriculum. So I do see encouragement there for me that this isn't just something that you know, people who are really into the subject will want to take on, and it's something that we can incorporate into standard curriculum. And I wonder if, uh, if Young Juan wanted to just say a couple of words about at the um, district level um, the, the work that you've done in terms of uh, uh, in relation to community ready and the degree to which uh, that's been adopted by the district as a whole. Sure, I'll just, um, I can say a few more words to that and, and I, I started the conversation talking about um, how, how I see a big part of our work really being about um, helping our district uh, redefine its mission. Um, not to say that college and career is not an important mission, but that uh, we need to think about college, career, and community as what we do um, as uh, when it comes to educating young people. Um, and you know, it's been interesting because that um, one conversation with um, you know a group of uh, central office folks. I think has led to a lot of uh, ripple effects in terms of um, how we think about our work, and um, you know, I, I I certainly think that you know people that I talk to in the district are just generally open to the idea. They don't necessarily um, have an expertise in it, or they don't necessarily um, come to it you know ready to you know, lead the work, but uh, they've been very, very receptive to the idea of civic engagement and, and that this should be a critical part of what we do. Um, but it's just been a matter of providing uh, a framework and a way for folks to um, engage in that. And also, I think the work of the teachers is critical because essentially what they're doing is they're showing um, other educators what, what does this look like? Uh, what does it look like when we try to do this and what are the challenges uh, and what are the successes that come out of it, and how do I begin to do this in my classroom? Uh, and so I actually was going to ask the question to you all uh, who are doing this, you know, like, imagine you're talking to a colleague, um, you know, and thinking about um, bringing that particular colleague, you know, in, into this project in some way, or just getting them to be involved, but knowing that they're someone who might be somewhat resistant. Uh, and so I'd be curious to hear how you might try to convince that person of the, the merits and uh, the reasons why they should um, uh, you know try to try to sp try to think about their curriculum in a different way as Steven said it's it's a huge lift uh, in some cases to really figure this out well I, I think so there's sort of one small way that that I think uh, some teachers may uh, feel like they want to get on board with this type of project and that is just to share some of the anecdotal stories uh, that come out of this. And I know I've had students uh, when they were involved in the, with the Obama campaign, uh, you know, they were writing about how they felt that just their own effort was so instrumental 
in helping Barack Obama get elected. I mean, they, they, I mean, you know, even though they're only one person, uh, or stories about how a young man felt like uh, he was talking, he was doing some phone banking, and uh, he was talking to an elderly woman, and he said in his in his um, journal that uh, he felt that she just really needed some other human contact. She needed to talk to somebody and he felt like he was doing some some a great a great deed by talking to this el elderly woman. And I think when teachers hear of the kinds of experiences that students have, uh, I don't know that it, it wouldn't just in, endear them to this whole project, even though you know it's not uh, that what I've just said is not terribly political. But uh, it, it does show the students uh, like doing it um, and uh, feel good about doing it. Marianne, so is, is that impact, I mean, it sounded to me as you were describing and I was thinking that the impact is on the student doing it as much as on the campaign. You know, I mean, so let me be cynical for a second. You know, Obama, California was never a question for Obama, right? right. So, <laughs> I so do, do you know what I'm saying there? So I'm not saying it wasn't a really meaningful experience for the student, but how how do you have that conversation with kids? Like, is voting really a civic act any more than liking something on on Facebook? No. <laughs> well. <laughs> Sorry, I. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think engaging in the campaign is definitely uh, a civic act. Um, you know, um, I always tell my students the story about you know driving to Nevada in 2004 to help Obama win that state, and I know it was all because of me that he won it. <laughs> and so they they sort of pick up on that and uh, get engaged with that. And I think it, it is important that they um, you know have have some sort of um, carry away with them um, s some sense of being a part of something bigger even though we know California is going to go blue at least hopefully for a long long while um, uh, it's it still seemed uh, even though they knew that uh, it still seemed like they felt that they did something great oh, did we lose Jesse yeah, he's he's having sound issues, um, okay. and so maybe when he comes back, it will fix. Look, I, within that that question that's been uh, buzzing around in my head, um, does does Oakland have a service learning requirement, and how does this fit in with that? Well, I can I can share a little bit around that. I I think Oakland at various points in times has had service learning requirements, and I think it's also been something required um, by different schools. Um, but currently, there's definitely nothing enforced at the district level around service learning. Um, and you know, I think there are a lot of different organizations that work within the schools to do service learning. Um, and Build On is one that's at Tech and and uh, some other places, Oakland High and others. Um, but I. Um, I'd be curious to see, you know, like, well, for us, at least for me, you know, I see service learning as one kind of a way in which young uh, folks can get involved in civic engagement, but it's certainly not um, the only kind of civic engagement. Mm -hmm. Jesse, uh, are, you, are you getting audio? Because I know you wanted to say something at some point. Yeah, we still um, can't hear while you. we're waiting, there's some. Um, we there's still can't hear you. I don't know why. Sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting, there's a couple people from Chicago Public Schools in the chat room, and they're doing uh, similar kind of work. And so I don't know if you were monitoring the chat, but um, there are some questions like, um, do you have some kind of resources or supports that you're finding to be useful in your civic ed practice? like curriculum or professional development, external partners, external opportunities. Can anybody speak to those kinds of connections? So this year we've been uh, doing inquiry work as part of our EDA work in small groups. I'm in a group that's focusing on research and is led by Paul O. Oh. So we've been meeting once a month to um, examine artifacts from our class, talk about our inquiry question as it relates to civic engagement, talk about our next steps, 
And that's been extremely useful along with one-on-one -on -one meetings with folks from Mills and Paul O. Just always having these constant check-ins, having a thinking partner, having a support takes a lot of the heavy lifting off of teachers themselves and really values the work. Um, so even though, even when I feel unprepared for those meetings, they're always really helpful to help me keep back on track and help me keep civic engagement going, even when I feel overwhelmed by papers and things. So I would say having PD time, having PD support, and having a group of folks who are interested and dedicated to the same topic has been crucial for me. Um, I think what's been really great is the having the forums to tell the story so that the kids like the kids being able to see that their work is out there, um, I think that the work with Etta and especially just the partnership with Mills has been really just mm -hmm. fruitful in getting the kids' voices out there. And then when the kids get to see that happen, um, you know, seeing their the, themselves speak at a convention that they're not even at, that they're participating in via a hangout, I mean, that to them is super powerful. And it's just, it turns the teacher and the student your whole classroom becomes this, like, we're all engaged in some type of work together because we're all trying something out new at the teacher level. You know, you're trying out things that other teachers might be looking at to see how they might, how might, how they might embark on the journey themselves, you know. And then you have your students that are also getting their face out there and, and, and having even just, you know, commenting between blogs uh, with other students. It's just, there's something about that authenticity of the audience part that I think that that energy that's created helps support the work. Um, but there are people that are so interested that are not directly tied in the classroom, and that's why the Mills folks have just been really instrumental in, I mean, they're, even their pre-service teachers just being an audience for the students, mm -hmm. that kind of, kind of partnership is really supportive. Um, I think student teachers can be really supportive and bring in all kinds of resources. So it's really tapping into just everything around you mm -hmm. um, and knowing who your folks are on campus that um, also have ties and allies that, that you could then um, bring in as audience for your kids and their work. Um, I think that's been really just that kind of knowledge. Joanna, could, could you? Oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Joanna, could you say, I've always been curious, how do you find all these audiences for your students? Because I've heard you talk yeah. about this in the class and others. I was wondering if you could give a little bit of specifics. So, so I started by using my family. Um, <laughs> so to go to the anecdotal, the, the family, you start with that. You start with, you know, you start with your partner who went, you know, and you start with your own self that went to grad school. And you just try to mm -hmm. utilize the heck out of everybody. Because so many people, they want to be involved in a classroom. They don't want to teach it, but they want to do something with the classroom. Mm -hmm. And... Why not? Let me use you for whatever your expertise is, and it's great. Um, there's the partnerships, like in the district, when you when somebody knows what you're doing in the classroom, and you're just not afraid to like kind of throw yourself out to the public, then they bring in folks to help you. I mean, getting on uh, TTT with Paul a, a bunch of times now, you know, I can partner with someone like Chris. I mean, when we met through that forum, so. Um, and then keeping a database of all the people that have helped your classroom, and then you just tap into, like, your Facebook. You put a wall posting out there, and then everybody suddenly joins. I just did that this week just for kicks, and it was really interesting to get all these alumni that suddenly now want to go back and help. I don't know. You just I, I just kind of use whatever's available. I mean, sometimes I just have these crazy brain farts, and I'm just like, hey, let me just go um, send out, you know, a Facebook post. So I, that's where I get them all. Um, but I did. I started with the grad schools event. That was huge. Thank you. And then I was just going to jump. I was just going to jump in on that and, and say that um, Joe also publishes, uh, you know, or her students publish at youthvoices.net, yeah. which I think is a great resource and a great forum uh, and a space that's open to all educators um, have their youth published there. And Paul Allison and Chris Sloan actually um, co-founded that site. Uh, so I think that's been an amazing opportunity. Um, there were some really interesting examples last year of Joe's students, you know, writing letters to open letters to the incoming superintendent. Uh, so I think that was really fascinating. Which actually just quickly brings me to uh, a challenge that I think is really um, worth noting uh, that didn't come up, and that is, I think, the technological infrastructure challenges um, in schools. Um, and I would say that one thing that I think has been fascinating is the the dogged nature of the teachers involved in this project and their willingness to, you know, continually butt their heads up against um, those limitations um, and find workarounds. Um, so I have, I actually snapped this, like, classic photo of Joe. I don't know if she remembers this, but her students sitting under <laughs> a sign 
in, in, in uh, Fremont that says, um, you know, cell phones prohibited while her kids were, like, tapping out stuff on their phones. So, well, because so the think, lab was dead. Yeah, That's exactly. Kind of so I think that there, there, are, there are the challenges that, you know, we confront as we're thinking about what does it mean to participate civically in the digital age um, that I think are true in many schools, in particular many urban schools um, that are in many urban districts, and yet uh, there are the workarounds and there's the dogged determination on, on half of the teachers. So I'm sorry, were you going to ask something, Paul, or Jesse, were you going to say something? I was going to encourage Jesse to see if we could hear him now, yeah. Oh, you're kidding. We still can't? I thought for sure he was on. Jesse, hello? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Sorry, I switched <laughs> devices like twice because I <laughs> – at any rate, there, speaking of technological uh, challenges, right? right? There you go. Um, I was just going to say about, with regards to technological challenges or whatever, um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that like a digital divide has been completely like uh, bridged, uh, but I would say that the, uh, you know, the, 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 the placement of more and more students having smartphones is really mm -hmm. kind of uh, – it's it's it it has done a lot to bridge that gap. I mean, it's not obviously as good as having like a state of the art computer lab in your school or anything like that. But um, I mean, I think that you know teachers who want their students to use technology in class have to recognize that phones are a tool and uh, they can be used for good or they can be used for evil. And telling students to put their phones away at all times um, is not an effective. It's a battle that you're not going to win. But it's also um, it's also not doing what we should be doing, which is teaching them how to use their technology in a way that is productive and that's going to be um, that's going to help them uh, further their education. Um, so I think showing them that they can do other things than uh, Facebook or Instagram, or that they can Facebook and Instagram in ways that are uh, that are geared towards learning, is an important thing and a responsibility that we have as uh, teachers in this generation. So I'm fascinated by the term that was used early on by Paulo um, and, uh, and others here. But um, the community ready term, is that a term that uh, students, if you went to your students and said, we want you to be community ready, what would they answer? Or do you talk to students that way? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Did anybody hear my question? <laughs> yeah. I think you stumped yeah. everybody. Yeah, well. <laughs> Anyone want to jump on that? Well, I, I don't use that, that term with my students, uh, but I want them to be ready for American politics at every level. Mm -hmm. I, was, I mean, I think... It, go ahead, Jessica. Yeah. Jessica, go ahead. Um, I think with ninth graders, uh, they would be completely confused, um, and that wouldn't just be because that term I'm not sure how to define myself yet, but also because they really don't know what it might mean to act in a community. Um, I shouldn't so say that. Many of them. Oh. Go ahead. I'm just saying we can we could move back a step and and just say what what it means to us too. <laughs> That's that might be helpful. <laughs> Although I do want to say I don't want to speak too broadly about my students not knowing what it means to act in their community. I think many of them do, mm -hmm. um, but I think their experiences are extremely uneven. So something I want to do as you know their introduction to high school is really just lay out on the table what people can do in their communities. And and I would just you know I, I think another way that I would think about that question, Paul Allison, is. Um, so is it more important, and perhaps it is, you know, for kids to understand the term community ready if we're using it, um, but by the same token, you know, do kids understand what it means to be career ready? Uh, you know, I mean, if you were to pose that question to them. Uh, so I, I wonder in some senses if, you know, I, I mean, I'm not arguing that the terminology shouldn't be apparent, you know, to kids, um, and that they shouldn't understand what, it, what the specific term means, but I would wonder if what's more important is that they understand um, through action the, um, you know, sort of the lived experience of community ready. Yeah, I, I didn't mean it as a challenge or a question. I, more like um, I'd be curious to know what my students thought the skills they needed to have to be successful in their community might not be the same list as mine, you know, so yeah. So. That's what I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. 
but I think that also speaks to why the kids should understand you know there are there are part of different communities and they can coexist in different communities and and but do they know how to negotiate and operate in whichever community they're in at the moment I mean if it's this professional world where they think oh you know what it means to actually operate in that world the, the things that you need um, but like what they would say right now their definition of community say for when I first get them, often it is just their local, what's around them, and they haven't yet expanded to this, you know, out to the online community, I think. Um, and I think that's been very, very powerful for them to figure out what it means to be community ready. There's a whole other, it isn't, I think it's beyond career. It's just that, that you know, it, there's an online component of all of this, an online world. And, and um, I like I like teaching them that part too because there's a lot they could accomplish there in that space. Um, I think too that you know when we're talking about you know the community that most of the teachers who are here teach in when we're talking about Oakland, um, I think that yeah they relate when they talk about community they're thinking about like uh, they're thinking about Oakland they're thinking about the neighborhood they live in, but one of the things that ends up happening is is that um, they see around them they see a lot of problems but they have no. You're on, you're muted there. Just Teaching our kids to kind of be. I'm sorry. Oh no, you're you're fine. Fine. okay. Um, and I think teaching our kids to not just to identify problems and kind of be, um, yeah. you know, find these problems to be debilitating, but to kind of give them an idea that like, not only can you do something about these problems, but you have a responsibility to do something about these problems. That's an important lesson that we need to kind of you know, let them know that it's like, you know, Oakland is given to you and you have to give back to Oakland. And you can't simply let the uh, things that are wrong around you um, happen without doing anything about it. So um, I think that that's an important lesson that we can uh, also teach our students through civic engagement. I would definitely love to hear more about that in the last few minutes here, about what, what does it take to help students see that um, and develop that sense of responsibility that sort of that sense of you know their civic identity or their identity as a member of a community, the responsibility towards it. Mm. Like what what helps cultivate that? You know, I just I finished a unit with my seniors uh, recently that was about violence in Oakland, and um, I think really spending a lot of time talking to them about what they think the causes of violence are and opening that conversation, not just that like oh, Oakland has so much violence, but what do you think causes it and what are some of the things that would work in terms of curtailing it or slowing it down? Um, I mean, I think just getting them to talk about these issues initially is really, really important because then they cease to be problems that we have no control over. They, they, they start to be problems that we can dialogue about and, and problem solve for. So I think that's obviously the first step is getting them to talk about the things that are very relevant to them. Do you find, and this, I guess this is not just for Jesse, but um, is the study of history, this sort of historical awareness of how, you know, people have dealt with issues in the past, um, you know, and, and the victories and, and losses that people have experienced in trying to make changes, like, does that, is that part of it? Like, does that, does that help? And if so, in what ways have, have people seen that work? Well, I, I used to teach U.S. history and certainly talk about uh, the great uh, shifts in, in viewpoint and the great actions that were taken by uh, individuals and small groups of people and large groups of people. And so in government, um, I'm always making reference back to those uh, to talk about how, in fact, it doesn't take a million people uh, to, to affect change and uh, certainly I think with these my my seniors at Oakland Tech, I think that uh, they're savvy enough, especially with technology, to be able to get fellow students at Oakland Tech on board in terms of dealing with uh, a lot of the uh, issues that um, need to be um, looked at and uh, repaired at our at our school. Mm -hmm. I would say that at Castlemont we're lucky to have a really wonderful social studies department so that when I see kids in my English class they're familiar with forms of oppression with the difference between narrative and counter narrative with a lot of these terms that they come really excited about and that definitely shows through in their journalism because they're very interested in 
um, problematizing phenomena, and they have all the they've already been exposed to a lot of these lofty concepts and these ideas that help them interpret the world, and they're excited to express that interpretation through journalism. So I definitely think the social studies matters, having a strong background. And we're up to 10 o'clock here. Um, here in the East, I know it's not 10 o'clock out there yet, but um, do, we should uh, go around and hear if anybody would like to have uh, kind of their final word this evening. Um, can we just do a quick go-around and see what people are thinking here at the end? Um, Chris Sloan, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'll, I'll start just because like, Thanks. there's some amazing stuff happening in the chat room. Um, Which just will the, be published with this, by the way. The right, and, but basically uh, there's a couple strands, and, and there's the people in Chicago who are talking about, for instance, one of the teachers uh, has her students uh, advocating with local aldermen and other officials about public housing in um, Chicago. And then um, I found out that Maggie... I think your kids um, have done some work around water rights in Northern California, maybe? That's not me. That's somebody else. <laughs> okay. Maybe another Maggie. But not, anyway. not, Maggie not Maggie, but Mag Maggie uh, did do the same kind of uh, work in which her students did research and then presented uh, their findings to professionals in the community. That was the piece. Oh, course. yes. Got it. So anyway, my point was, you know, there seems to be a connection between uh, teachers finding their civic voice and then, you know, helping students do the same. So I think there's a story there that we haven't quite unpacked. Thanks for that. Jesse? Um, you know, I think that uh, I, I remember something somebody said to me in college, um, and, you know, and what, what they said was is that... Uh, you know, you spend about 80% of your time outside of the classroom. That's where you're going to do most of your learning. Um, that's not the case in high school, but I think preparing our students for the world, um, college, or just the outside world, it's important that, um, you know, obviously we can't have students, uh, you know, they, they're not going to have as much freedom as they are in college, but we have to do everything we can as teachers to bring the outside world into our classrooms and then to take the opportunities that we can to get our students um, outside of the classrooms, um, the few opportunities that we do have, because I really do feel like that's where most of the learning is uh, is going to happen um, for them. Um, and you know, and and again, I think that um, it makes the things that I teach about and that we all teach about a whole lot more relevant when there's this real world application. So that's the most important part of civic engagement for me. Cool. Thanks for joining us and being tenacious on your devices there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Man, Jessica. I just um, sort of to play on what Jesse was saying, really appreciate with this focus on civic engagement the opportunity to look at the outside world and bring it in. Um, but again, sort of um, coming back to the building curriculum piece, making sure that what we do do that is focused in the classroom, that is skill based. Um, on the flip side also has an application outside of the classroom. Um, I think both are really important and so um, I'm looking forward to talking more about it. Joe? Joe, you're muted. Gotta unmute. Um, there you go. There we go. Um, this is what civic engagement is. This is this is right here. This is like a, a you know we talk about the work at our sites about how difficult it is that you always feel like you're kind of alone in the in the tech work especially, and it's really hard. So just seeing um, just seeing Oakland teachers and 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 people we've I've already worked with and just that we're all here and we're talking about this work it just gives a lot of hope. Um, and I and I really would love to partner with other folks' classrooms across schools. I feel like I feel like we're ready, and and just seeing this right now and seeing all the support around it, I'm really like super ridiculously hopeful for Oakland and 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 the kids. Just so awesome. It was cool. it was nice to be on tonight. This was cool. Maggie, um, I guess my last ringing thought is that I'm really grateful to the Edda Project for pushing me to do this work because it's not something that comes naturally to me. It's not something that was already in my skill set. Civic engagement was not what I was thinking about at the time until Young Juan <laughs> invited me to be proud of this. But it's been a really big part of my growth as a teacher, and I really appreciate being pushed, and now I can't imagine not having done it. So 
So thank you for pushing us, and I recommend everybody else get involved in similar projects if you have the chance. Marianne. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm really also very thankful to be a part of the EDA project. Um, it, it feels really good to um, have a structure that enable, enables us to communicate with our fellow teachers, and I know at Tech, I'm really excited about the fact that we're um, going to have civic engagement at every single level um, throughout the school. Um, and as department chair, this is this is something that I really want to see happen at our school. And and personally, I think you know my students are used to sort of engaging within the classroom, you know, doing research, finding evidence, making arguments. Uh, but I really enjoy seeing them doing that outside in the community. Uh, that's that's a real benefit. Mm -hmm. Paul, do you have any thoughts? Sure, yeah, just um, two uh, hopefully quick things. Um, one is that I think this is really um, challenging work, and, uh, and I think what's great about this particular project is both you know, the people involved and, um, and their intellectual capacity and their drive and their willingness to collaborate with one another um, and engage in the professional learning that this requires. Um, and as well, you know, it's a, it's a multi-year project, so I think uh, that's important to know um, that I think you know, the, the learning is spiraling um, upward. And the, the other thing that I would just say quickly that I think um, was perhaps touched upon but not explicitly stated is that uh, you know, civic learning and civic engagement um, is, is, is something that uh, extends beyond school. And school is just one node in you know, a, a young person's um, civic ecosystem um, over the course of time. And so I think uh, being able to recognize that in school is, is huge. Um, to know that what we are providing for our kids, and perhaps is just reiterating what Jesse said, but providing for our kids is, you know, this are the skills and the tools to be able to um, act in an informed way civically um, outside of school is, I think, really what this is about. And that's what all these teachers, I think, believe as well. Thanks for joining us. Stephen. You're muted, Stephen. Sorry. Does that work? There you go. There okay. you go. Yeah. Um, no, just to every, all the teachers that are involved, you know, thank you for all your, like I said, it takes a lot of extra time and energy to be a part of something like this. And uh, like Maggie was saying, push yourself out of your comfort zone so that, you know, you're doing something that's, that's important to your students. Uh, things that they're going to remember more than you know what they read in a book. They're going to take this you know amongst into their lives in the future. Um, as far as I'm concerned, like if uh, if there's any way that I can help support this, or if I can go into your classroom or act as a you know as a judge or a reader or anything like that, you know please let me know because I I see you all as the the representatives uh, of this work that are going to get other people in the district on board. You know whether or not the grants there or not eventually, you know, like to, to do these type of projects, even on a smaller scale in their own classroom, you know, is important. So thank you. Everyone, thanks for organizing this tonight. Your thoughts? Yeah, I just, um, you know, echoing Stephen, just a huge appreciation um, for all of our teachers in this project, um, many of whom aren't uh, on, you know, here in the Hangout, but um, specifically of the five teachers who joined us tonight. and. Um, you know, all the different uh, ways in which you support your students to be community ready, to be uh, actively engaged in making a positive difference in their communities. Um, I just have uh, a profound appreciation for the work that you do. Um, and uh, anything I can do to support, as Stephen said, um, you know, that's, that's why we're here. So thank you all for being on tonight. And particularly for folks, um, you know, taking a digital dive um, where this is not maybe your native land, um, we, we really appreciate, um, you know, stretching yourselves to be here to, uh, on the Hangout. Very cool. And um, it comes to me to say that um, thank you all uh, for being here. And please come back. Um, what Joe said earlier uh, is really true. Um, we, we're here every Wednesday night. Um, maybe we'll have some of those Chicago teachers on, maybe, you know, um, certainly um, we, we don't do a lot of detailed planning. We like to see what comes up, and certainly in um, 2014, 
we had a conversation right at the beginning about Dazani, uh, a homeless girl who was uh, featured in the New York Times. Um, and then we last week, uh, Chris Sloan organized uh, and invited a couple of guys from Kentucky who are doing amazing civic work, really uh, around food. Um, so, and and then your conversation tonight. There seems like a theme building here. So, really, thank you for adding to that um, as we move into uh, 2014. Um, we have been doing this now for about eight years um, at edtechtalk.com. Um, and it's broadcast uh, over the World Bridges Network, and that network was set up with Jeff, by Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, and we always kind of recognize them here at the end. Thank you all, and um, we'll see you soon, I hope. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Bye.